This year's flu shot is only 28% effective. Is that even worth getting for most people? I can't answer that on an individual basis. For me, it's 15 minutes at the local pharmacy, a moment of discomfort, and a $15 fee. And for that minor inconvenience, I have a reduced chance of one to two weeks of misery. For the very young or very old, it may be the difference of life or death. That's not what I want to focus on for this brief video. This is going to be about the impact of a 28% effective flu vaccine on community public health. I'm using highly oversimplified models here and some back of envelope calculations. A truly accurate model would require more time than I have at the moment. This is in the right ballpark and conveys an important idea about the real reason vaccines are effective. The basic reproduction rate for a virus is roughly how many people each infected person passes the disease on to. It's a function of contact rate, how often people come into contact with the infected, the transmission rate, how often contacts cause transmission, and the duration of infectiousness. Basic reproduction rate is abbreviated as R sub zero. If each infected person infects more than one person, we have a spreading epidemic that grows over time. If each infected produces fewer than one additional infection, the disease dies out over time. The R sub zero is generally fixed for a given strain of a given disease. R sub zeros for measles are around 15, for HIV around 3, and for Ebola around 2. The R sub zero for influenza varies somewhat from year to year. The highly infectious 1918 pandemic strain had an R sub zero of 2.9, but the median over recorded history is about 1.28, so that each infected person passes the disease to slightly more than one other person, or we could say every four infected pass it to five, so that over time it amplifies and grows. There's a second number called the effective reproductive rate. It's the product of the basic reproductive rate and the proportion of the population that are susceptible to the disease, abbreviated S over N. This is the statistic that changes over time as more people become resistant to the disease due to immunity or fewer susceptibles are available to be infected because they're isolated or dead. The other way we can change the proportion of susceptibles is to vaccinate. If our vaccine is only 28% effective, as the flu vaccine is for the 2014-2015 season, that means the proportion of exposures that would be susceptible would be 72%, roughly. Let's plug that into two formulas, one showing 0% vaccination and the other 100% vaccination by a 28% effective flu shot. At 0% vaccination, the effective reproductive rate is the product of the R sub 0, 1.28, times 1, representing 100% susceptibles, producing an effective reproduction rate of 1.28, which represents epidemic growth of flu. At 100% vaccination, with a 28% effective flu shot, the effective reproductive rate is flu's R sub 0, 1.28, times 0 0.72, representing 72% susceptibles, which equals 0 0.92, or declining infection. Each person is infecting slightly less than one other person. While your personal risk of getting influenza doesn't seem much decreased with a low effectiveness vaccine, after all, 28% risk reduction is hard to get excited about, the impact on community public health is much larger, putting the brakes on what would otherwise become a growing epidemic disease. You benefit from this far beyond your personal risk reduction on a per-contact basis. Perhaps in a future video, we'll draw out this model with more detail and accuracy. But for now, understand that while every year the public health community hope for a highly effective vaccine against influenza, even 28% effectiveness is saving lives, reducing disease burden, and making everyone a little healthier and happier. Thanks for watching.